we all saw last year the movement from from Nunes was always going to be a problem for defenders. We always thought he's got good movement. You know, he gets himself into the right areas. If he could, if he could just finish, <laughs> he'd be out. He says he'd be away. Do you know what I mean? He'd, he'd be he'd be chasing down Haaland's goal tallies, but. In that moment, mate, that's your bread and butter. Like, I was screaming, I was screaming on the Jeep saying, you've got to finish that. And I said to Steve, it's not even about getting on targets. You've got to bury that. Mm, drink it. Like, you, yes, oh, mate. You got you, to, because for me, I think I tweeted, you've got to minimum hit the target. But no, you you go further. No, go further. You've, got you, you've got to score. Okay. You've got to score them chances. We've spoke about it in 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 in, in, in content in, in recent weeks or in the past where we said, that ball falls to anybody in the box. It could be the 90th minute. Who do you want finishing it? You always say Diogo Jota yeah. because they're the ones that he hangs his hat on and says, yeah, that's me all day. Nunes needs to get a little bit more of that in A little bit more ruthless because he probably... And he, he didn't have a whole like a whole host of chances today. I noticed that. And it wasn't like he was on the fringes because, you know, I've already credited his, his link up play and, 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 and his hold up play was good. But in front of goal, it was few and far between that the ball ended up at his feet mm -hmm. so I genuinely thought in that moment that's your big chance and it was getting close to the hour mark and I thought when you need a winner now because you've not done it yeah you've helped us win a penalty in that fair play because you've not done it in front of goal Klopp might have just looked at that and just thought yeah you're going to be the one and we're going to get Gakpo on we might have to put Jota on and we just, we just want to get 3-1 I thought a two like we hadn't even got two yet but I thought we was always going to need 3-1 mm -hmm. and I thought Klopp might have thought we need to roll the dice here and, and, and really try and get a little bit more of our attack going um, and in, in that moment I thought oh that might be writing on the wall for Darwin's day Turns out I was completely wrong. And, and thankfully you were, yeah. Because I agree. You know what? In, in essence, I agree with you. If you kind of take away what happens next, I think you're right. I think that, for me, felt like his moment. moment yeah. And we're getting to that time in the game whereby Klopp likes to make changes anyway. I think Gakpo and Jota have already been out warming up. So yeah. you're thinking, oh, that could be you, that Darwin. Like, that could be your sort of lasting legacy. And it would have been a shame, really, because he had a decent game. Yeah, if that, that, yeah, that's I mean. what we remember him for, the fact he squandered the big chance. The big that chance. would have been a big, big blow. But it's pretty much, it's typical Darwin in the fact that you... Missed the makes easy a, shit. Makes a mess of the easy one. And then, like, I don't know, within a handful of minutes later, he does what he does. And... Let's let's bring it back. Talk about Mac first. Well, yeah, start yeah, to finish, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, from Got start to. to finish, this goal is just out of the very top draw. And I, I kind of alluded to it. I think Mikhail's had a really good game in the six. Doing the six stuff as well. I was a little bit critical of him in the build up about his sort of his defensive instincts mm. and the fact he doesn't sense that danger. I think he did that stuff really well today, to be honest. I must I must give him credit for that. But this is what McAllister is about. This is why we signed Lexis McAllister. And we spoke a moment about sort of unlocking doors. We weren't sure before the game whether Liverpool would have the guile and the sort of the nous to, to break down what would be a stubborn West Ham side. They were going to sit deep. They were going to make life difficult. But this pass, Errol, like the. The pass and the finish are both, like I say, right, right out the top draw. They're just outstanding. Unbelievable. And I, I said to Steve, you know, I've watched this game a hundred times and seen us not get the result because we missed chances like what Darwin's done. And we kick ourselves down the foot and you look later on in the season and you think to yourself, ah, oh, if we wouldn't have drew at West Ham at home, do you know what I mean? Like, that, that's the game, really. If, yeah. if we put that to bed, we're, we're two extra points closer to whoever at the top at the end of the season. And you have all these permutations just flying around in your head because of those little moments. And we always say, oh, it's fine margins. But when you up the quality of the midfield and you have players you know a couple of guys they you know dropped in the super chats before him and, and mentioned you know you know if he's going to be in there the the role that McAllister plays he's gonna have to do the quarterback role mm -hmm. for us I think that's how he, he's probably you're probably gonna see the most out of him in, in that position and he does he gets he, he's afforded too much time on the ball there's no there was never really any pressure on West Ham today that wasn't really their tact to go for any real high press or anything when our midfielders had the ball or anything like that but he gets the ball he has the time. Nunes is not on the shoulder of the last man either. He's a little bit deeper in, in centrally, but he's always looking his body movement. He's always on the half, ready to just run. And he just starts to stretch that defence and just etch his way into the box. Mm. And as soon as he commits, McAllister just pulls the trigger. And it's glorious because I've been saying it on streams. I've been thinking it for a long time. It's We're, we're counting down the days until a ball just floats over Darwin's head and he just first time whacks it into the back of the net and I didn't I, like I've been expecting a thunderbolt I'm not yeah, gonna lie do you know what I mean like feels closer yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like yeah. I've been expecting the full thunderbolt and I can see it in my head how it's meant to look but 
he couldn't have finished that any other way because yeah. he's so close to goal. If you try to lever that from there, yeah. you're blazing it over he the just bar. Just to change direction the ball, doesn't he? That's all he's got to do. Yeah, and he does it perfectly. <sighs> you know, it's deft. And you don't say deft and Darwin Nunes very often. <laughs> <in the sense. laughs> That'll probably be the only time. <laughs> Clip it. Because that'll be the only time that we say it, I swear. Yeah. But it was unbelievable. And it, he doesn't look at the goal the entire time. His back, he's on his body's the heart, it's half open towards the run. And his eyes, and he's done it. I've seen him do that movement a good six, seven times already before. And he's not have he's never done the execution right. We've just said that. But the movement, he instinctively knows what he needs to do when a ball's floating over his shoulder. And I like that. I like that about him because there's just something when a striker can do that. Kane's done it. Ibrahimovic does it. Levin Doffs. They've all got that in their locker. Do you know what I mean? I think when you're a top draw striker, that's your that's your special card in it. That's your finishing move. And he's put all of the pieces together. But as you say, the touch that he gets, he just changes the direction of it and just it's, flicks it away from the keeper. It's classy. It's 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 fucking classy. Like, and he knew it. Is. The celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like not many strikers have got that in them. Like in the locker, even the some of the best ones, like you got like for me, it's like Van Persie esque. It's a little yeah. bit Berbatov esque, and two fellas we don't particularly like very much. But to do that type of thing, it's not that easy to do. Like that that ball coming over the shoulder is a really difficult skill to get right and he's done it like it's just brilliant it really is to watch that ball onto your foot and to get the contact right is really really outstanding we could, I could talk about that goal no, yeah, and, and, and yeah. unpack it for yeah. you could get hours worth of content out of that to be honest 100% with you because mate, yeah. he's absolutely smashed it and there'll be comparison videos of other players that have worked it, well, it really yeah. is it really yeah. really is mate and it was yeah. a quality goal like I said we don't see that type of stuff from down Both and I think player. that was the dagger that, that, that really sent West Ham and he knew at that point then he was up against it well, we've seen it a lot from teams playing against Liverpool. Like they've been in the game for large parts. I think Aston Villa is probably the one that really weren't. And they've been in the game for a while. And all of a sudden, our oh, power and the lads coming off the bench, which happens in this instance as well. They probably just look over and think, "How the fuck are they bringing them on?" Yeah. Like I was Joe Jota and Cody Gakpo and Ryan Granberg coming on to this game. It's a, it's a luxury because the lads that we've got are full of endeavour. They're full of power. They're full of speed you've got engines on them all every single one of them's got an engine now so your defenders who predominantly are going to do the 90 minutes are going to get run into the ground that's the one thing that this Liverpool team now have got they've got the ability to run teams into the ground and it's half of what's helping us win midfield battles more and more and then when you say yeah you're going to bring on Jota then when you say you're going to bring on Gakpo and then when you say yeah you're going to bring on Birch, it's just another set of problems that yeah. At the start of the match, you might have had the answers for because you were fresh legged. Yeah. Now, when you're weary legged and you're absolutely blowing out your ass, and you're looking at these new fresh faced lads that are about to come on, licking their lips, thinking, "Yeah, go on, I'll have a run at you now." Yeah. It's frightening for these teams. And I've been saying, if I've said we, we've got the best front line or the fr- front line options of the league, I, I'm, I've not been worried that we're going to struggle to score goals this season. It's always the defensive, and we've always had question marks around the midfield because you were not there's not the body of work to really hang your hat and say they're going to be quality for us mm. there are still defensive questions but make no mistake this front five that we can choose from is absolutely frightening mm. because any one of them on the day could be the one they could be the grim reaper for any single team you can do it single-handedly you can do it as a collective you can do it with individual moments of brilliance but make no mistake they're the real deal <laughs>